Hey guys, my name is Kelly and I'm married to Nikki and we are from the Mark Boss Congregation. I'm a certified counsellor and I've been asked today to talk about perfectionism. Specifically, I'll be talking a little bit about the description perfectionism is given in the secular literature and then move on to encouraging you in how we are to view ourselves in light of what God thinks about us. Firstly, perfectionism isn't a specific disorder or classification and it's quite a subject, subjective construct, but there is a general consensus that perfectionism is a personality disposition characterized by ex exceedingly high expectations of standards of performance, as well as um, concerns about making mistakes, ruminating about every mistake, um, as well as the fear of the social consequences of not being perfect or not being seen, seeing, being seen in a negative light. And this can trigger a relentless pressure experienced by those with extreme perfectionistic traits. Um, some people think that actually this is a good thing to have, but there's a dark side to this perfectionism. Often those that are trying to make one situation perfect make a lot of other situations worse. And this can be different from striving for excellence and it's much more than the assumption that someone just likes to have things in order, likes to be neatly dressed or have their house in, in order and always clean. Um, I think this reputation of perfectionism oversimplifies things and I think even romanticizes it as something that's seen as a positive virtue. Perfectionism is actually a really difficult personality trait for many, um, leading to a range of problems such as lack of motivation, depression, even this imposter syndrome, which creeps in when one feels like their own achievements are not deserved legitimately from their own efforts or skills. So then you can imagine the pressure one may feel and how this can lead to increased risk of burnout and anxiety and maladaptive coping. But a healthy side um, to perfectionism is when it is viewed in an adaptive sense of the trait, which is basically when a person has the drive and motivation and the desire to learn and be better. Knowing that making mistakes is part and parcel of learning, but doesn't have to ha be a, have a bearing on a sense of who you are and your reason to exist. Um, but maladaptive perfectionism though isn't concerned with that process, it's just that outcome which is always actually unattainable. Jeffrey Young, who assesses people with these type of schemas, mentions that the realms of perfectionism can be applied to many areas such as schoolwork, um, appearance, home or athletic performance, artistic performance, even ethics and rule keeping. Um, those can be where perfectionistic traits show itself. So it actually comes down to the root motivation Maladaptive perfectionism can be seen as rooted in fear that one is a failure and that fuels this obsessive fixation on doing something perfectly um, or it can prevent one from doing anything at all. Um, the, those unrelenting standards of self and others are used to cope with this core belief um, that to attain acceptance, um, to not experience rejection one has to live up to their own um, impossible standards. Um, and so those with this core belief can be extremely self-critical in their own self-evaluations and strive for um, that flawlessness. And interestingly too, that this primary emotion, there's a primary emotion of disgust that has been linked to high, perfection, high perfectionism. And is that there's a form of self-loathing when the standard isn't achieved. So how can we be free from perfectionism? While it's good to work through our cognitive beliefs and recognize our irrational thinking um, and develop compassion, Colin Smith specifically speaks to Christians who struggle with perfectionism and says that while we may understand that we are saved by grace and recognize we're not perfect, despite our best efforts, we still get frustrated with ourselves for not being better. We can. This is because we can easily forget that um, we have an ongoing presence of sin in our lives. And for me, this means that, you know, when Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, he says, we need to be perfect just as our Father is perfect. However, all of our lives and until our last breath, we can never reach the perfection he is speaking about because 
of our sinful nature is always with us. And this is why we need to realize we need the real perfect grace, work of grace to continually save us. This is true even more so on our best days than on our worst days. When you see and you see that, you will be delivered from this crushing, crushing burden of perfectionism. You know, Hebrew, Hebrews 10, 14 says that, For by a single offering he has perfected all those who are being sanctified. Jesus is perfect as we place our faith and our trust in him as Lord of our lives, and he becomes the one that we behold and are transformed into. And uh, his perfection gets to the focus of our self-efforts and our and uh, the focus on ourselves, which actually does separate us from faith if we trust in our own strength. So by trusting Jesus, even in the battle against sin to sanctify our imperfections, this motivates us towards holiness. And uh, we can accept that his, his sanctifying work in our lives, which is rooted and grounded in faith and in love. Thank you for listening to me.